When I was a little girl, I really liked to read the stories about the whales and the dolphins. And I especially liked the beluga whales because they seemed to me very beautiful, very white, very kind, just fantastic, very cute. And I really dreamed of meeting them one day. And I knew that they lived far away from Moscow, from my natural city. I knew that they were somewhere in the northern seas where the water temperature was very, very, very cold. I have to tell you that from my childhood I had uh, health problems. I had uh, kidney disease, so that was a sort of very weak uh, moment connected to me. So every, every time when I got some cold water into my shoes, I got immediately sick. So all my dreams about going to the north and meeting the beluga whales became problematic. And also, I was claustrophobic. If I happened to be inside a narrow and dark passage, and I, if I touched the walls with my shoulders, I got really panic. Fears, 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 and later I realized that all my health problems, they were connected to the hidden fears which were inside my subconsciousness. It's really hard to believe, but in 2011, in April, my photo team pro group and uh, myself, we went to the Polar Circle for a huge and incredible project that was a unique project. We went there uh, to undertake an art and research project. So, I had a chance to dive with the beluga whales under the ice when the water temperature was minus two and I had no any thermal protection. This is what you see now. And uh, there is a question, why? Because it's a crazy idea. Well, first of all, I wanted to make all my dreams coming true. Second, I wanted to deepen my professional competence. Because I didn't know what it means to go under the ice and to work in such conditions and how to teach in, in such conditions because I was already a professional instructor. Also, we wanted to check all the theories that existed at that moment. What, is, what would happen to a human body when it is exposed to the extreme uh, conditions around and to, to, you know, to the cold water. And definitely we wanted to know how would the beluga whales would react if there is a body in, in, in the water uh, which is exposed to such cold conditions. And uh, we went there you see the beluga whales, they, they're just beautiful and fantastic. The project seemed to be incredibly dangerous and uh, very difficult, I can tell you why. Because we know that um, if you go into the water of minus two and if you stay there around five minutes, then irreversible processes start in your body. And uh, normally people die after eight minutes, but most of them die within three minutes because they panic. And if you take off your facial uh, equipment, let's say the mask or the goggles, and if you open your eyes, then something is going to happen to them. Well, actually the eye nerve is going to freeze and you will lose your vision forever. Extreme condition. This is what we knew. 
but definitely there were a lot of things we didn't know about you know what would take place there because uh, nobody in the world had ever done something like that before we were the pioneers to some extent we were the explorers so what did, uh, what we had to learn and what were the hidden you know points first we didn't know how I would react to the ice room, which was above me. We didn't know what would be the reaction of the beluga whales to a human being who is there, because they're huge and very powerful. We didn't know, uh, you know, if I survive or not there. We didn't know how the equipment, the uh, photo and video equipment would function because, you know, the conditions are too extreme. And uh, it was a challenge for the whole team, I can tell you that. I had to stay under the water, under the ice as long as I could and I had to survive somehow. And uh, my team had to organize um, the safety logistics, which was not a piece of cake at all because nobody had done that before. So we had to be very creative and very, very smart in that. And also the team had to shoot all the photo and uh, video um, in one take. <laughs> That this is extremely difficult because we know that uh, uh, the animals and children they're very hard to work with uh, because you know normally they are unpredictable and they do what they want to do and um, uh, it's up to them to decide if they're going to accept that or not. <laughs> So somehow we had to establish the harmony with the beluga whales and how should we do that? Um, because if there is no harmony then you know the animals they will disappear because they are in the bay at the biological station, they are in the natural uh, environment. So it was a real challenge for us. And definitely that was me who really wanted to be a friend to them. The beluga whales, they are extremely vulnerable, even though they are absolutely strong and powerful. They are extremely huge, they are up to six and a half meters long. And they are um, very um, beautiful and uh, at the same time they wait a lot because uh, their weight is up to uh, one and a half tons. But at the same time they are extremely vulnerable in front of a human because human beings don't tend to consider, some of the human beings tend to consider themselves as the czars, you know, in this universe. To be a friend to them, I had to become very vulnerable in front of the conditions, in front of the climate, in front of the people who were around me and especially in front of society, of the society. So I realized that, and I realized that I had to be naked. So I took off my freedom in suit, and uh, I had to take all my, you know, protective masks, I would say, metaphorically. And it had been a long, long way uh, to that moment. I think that the whole life took me to that moment, uh, to that precise moment. When I was a school, school girl, I was a swimmer. Then I became a diver. And when I, uh, 
when my diving equipment was stolen, I became a free diver. <laughs> I set world records and uh, I was a world champion. And actually, the, the way of the champion had been, help me, had been helping me for some time. But one day, I opened my eyes and I realized that there is no sense in it anymore. Because I was a, I was a squirrel in the wheel, <laughs> just repeating, repeating, and living from one competition to another. And from the age of six, I knew that all the chances that life gives me and all the activities I undertake in my life, they are for the, for the question, who am I? And why I came to this world. That was very important for me to, you know, to answer the question and answering and answering and answering. And uh, at a certain point I started to feel that I'm dead, practically dead. I have no answers. And uh, I have to stop that somehow. I gave up from a career of a top athlete and I started to teach. And there were a lot of people around me and I taught them freediving as the instrument for the personal growth. I realized that all the people, they were like angels for me. And they are. And you are the angels. Because Every angel gives me a chance to look at the mirror and to see who am I and to find the ways how I can improve myself and what I should work on to find the harmony, to find love, to find, you know, uh, to become tolerant, to become uh, flexible, to open my heart, to have the inner smile. This is an incredible instrument that I learned from my uh, students and from the people who were around me. And actually, you know, all that uh, lessons, I would say, uh, they were very helpful when I was at the polar circle. Because somehow, I had to find uh, the ways how to survive in such terrible conditions, but they were really terrible. When uh, also I had to overcome a lot of physical barriers because you remember I had tears and I had kidney problems, so I I had to harmonize them somehow. And uh, life normally gives us chances when we wish something badly and if this wish corresponds to the sense of the universe. So, a miracle happened. One day, I happened to be in Belarus. I went there to see my friends and my friends, they lived by a very beautiful lake. That was October and the water temperature in the lake was around 14 degrees in Celsius and I don't know how it happened but my friends offered to go for a swim in October and kidney problems and I don't know why but I said yes let's go and I think that happened because of my trust and my love to them so I realized that Trust makes harmony. Every day, when I entered the water for the first time, you know, it was, it was just shocking. I was there and I had a breathing spasm. I couldn't put my face down. And uh, my, my, my swim lasted maybe 30 seconds. But surprisingly, when I got back, I was absolutely fine. I had no, you know, I didn't get sick as I expected. 
And then I practiced every day and every day and I could see that you know, I'm, I'm much better in the water, it's easier and in one week I could swim there for 45 minutes and uh, it felt okay but the water temperature was around 9 or 8 degrees already so I realized that that was the perfect moment to go to the polar circle and to meet the beluga whales alright, we went there, I am at the polar circle and I expect that, you know, everything is going to happen now and I'm in the water for the first time. I'm there. Oops. There is a huge difference between plus four, I got accustomed to, and minus two. As you probably know, the salty water uh, uh, got frozen at lower temperatures because it's salty. So, imagine that millions of needles got into your body, into your bones, into your skin, into your cells and you have a shocking spasm in your body and your heart po posed for microseconds and you're absolutely helplessly there. You are trying to breathe, but there is no way to breathe, you are just shocked. All my body denied to be there. I did. <laughs> it was just shocking. And uh, when I was entering the water, there were the beluga whales around. And when the water level reached my heart, I had the heart spasm and the beluga whales disappeared. Probably you know that the whales and the dolphins, they can see with the ultrasound. So they scan me. And at the beginning, they liked the, the picture. But when the water level reached my heart, they really disliked that. So I seem to be very strange and weird for them, maybe even hostile. So they disappeared in the sea. They disappeared. They were a under the water, they didn't want to approach, they were really distant and then I realized that I have to do something with that. So I tried to uh, go inside of myself and to light the fire. Uh, I use special breathing and uh, mind techniques which I practice, these are the yoga techniques. And also, um, I had to keep my inner smile and to open my system, the body of my system. And you know what happened next? They, get, they got closer and at the end, they realized that something was going on and they started helping me out to the surface. Were they friendly and caring? Yes, they were. You know, in such conditions, the only way to overcome all the obstacles is to keep the inner fire, to keep the heart open, to have the inner smile, to be acceptive, to be free of attachments and grasping. It's very important to become flexible mentally and physically. And it's very important to accept what is, what is happening to you. I realized that trusting the universe, trusting the heart, trusting the people, creates harmony. Inner smile makes us accepting and flexible, open and loving. When we have the inner smile, when we smile inside, we can make miracles. We, we get relaxed and a miracle happens. We are in the moment. In such a state we can 
uh, seize the moment and this is what is happening to us and this is the moment when we get into the flow of life the flow of life I'm here to share my story with you but I ask you not to repeat this because I do believe that people are unique and all of you are unique and uh, I want you to create your own story and I ask you to go into your flow of life as deep as you can sometimes it's challenging sometimes it's really hard sometimes it's it's even dangerous but don't be scared keep your inner smile and be open to what is coming to you and then a miracle is going to happen life is full of miracles and impossible can become possible if you believe in it in the blue where time learns the sense of endless love I have enjoyed the life infinity don't stir and wait in silence for the moment of harmony and grace the moment of true love the moment of first breath. Right.